Hello everyone, I'm Mitra Amaran and I graduated from Fatima College in 1977. I came to the United States in 1983 when many of you were not even born. In 2016, I went to Duke University and got certified as an integrative health coach. I help my clients take control of their own health. Even though right now I run a preschool um, in Can the Kansas City, Missouri area, I actually um, do uh, I'm very passionate about your health and I'm doing this um, uh, I do my coaching um, as a social enterprise in honor of my mother who actually passed away quite young from diabetes and high blood pressure and the complications from those so I wanted to dedicate the rest of my life in order to help you and your family reverse as much of those metabolic syndrome as possible It has been told by Hippocrates and our own Thiruvalvar that food is our best medicine and um, medicine is our food. Um, so if you take that into consideration, then you would really, uh, you know, uh, pay very close attention to what you're eating. Our dietary advice and what we eat hasn't been good for our, for our health. Um, for the last 50 years, we are eating a lot more carbohydrates because of the suggestions by doctors as well as dietitians to eat low fat. So what we do right now is we are eating a lot more carbs and we are ending up with 80% uh, per increase in metabolic diseases such as obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, arthritis, and even cancer. When we have been told that carbohydrates are good and oils are bad, we have been eating low fat, which means we have replaced healthy fats which were eaten by our forefathers with more carbohydrates, more than what a body can handle actually. All carbohydrates except fiber are converted into glucose and ab absorbed into our bloodstream. Did you know that at a certain time a body can only carry about 4 grams of sugar, which is about uh, one teaspoon, but we overload a body with hundreds of grams of carbohydrates throughout the day. What happens to the excess carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are converted to glucose and absorbed by a circulatory system. The glucose in our blood caused our body to secrete a hormone called insulin. It is a highly inflammatory substance. It immediately converts the glucose into fat and first stores in our liver, leading to fatty liver. When the liver gets too full of fat, it can no longer take any more fat. The body then deposits these fats under our skin, which is subcutaneous fat, which is actually not as harmful as visceral fats, which is actually our belly fat. The belly fat surrounds all our important organs and causes our bad cholesterol such as triglycerides to go up. Ultimately, it just leads to obesity and or cardiovascular diseases and or high blood pressure and or cancer. So um, our recommendation is, um, is to cut down your carbohydrates and increase healthy fats such as coconut oil, uh, sesame oil, um, butter, ghee, um, some of those that actually make our foods taste much better also. So how many carbohydrates can you have each day? Um, about 20 to 30 grams per day if you have any of the metabolic syndromes, such as obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, or cardiovascular problems. Um, if you, you can take up to 50 grams per day if you want to lose weight in a slow manner or 50 to 100 grams per day if you want to maintain your weight and you don't have any of the metabolic syndromes. So instead of counting calories, please count how many grams of carbohydrates you're consuming each day. Now, if you look at this picture, we talked about taking only 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates each day, especially if you or any of your family members suffers from any of the metabolic syndromes. Would you like to spend those 20 grams of carbohydrates on half a 
plain bun or one medium-sized potato or half a cup of cooked rice etc or would you want to fill your stomach with sumptuous food such as the above vegetables such as berries and nuts and spinach and all kinds of low-carb vegetables that, that is shown over here also by not eating multiple meals a day and not snacking in between try to eat all your food within a six to hour six to eight hour window this helps in controlling the excretion of insulin into our bloodstream which causes a huge inflammation of our bodies try to eat just two meals a day by pushing your breakfast closer to 11 a.m or 12 p.m uh, eat as uh, eat as much as you want until you feel comfortably full not over full but comfortable com comfortable enough and then stop eating and then don't eat again until you're um, until you're hungry and then again eat until you're comfortably full but not keep pushing it too much uh, but also eat uh, finish the last meal by 5 or 6 p.m and um, that should let you not get some of this belly fat drink a lot of water throughout the day at least eight cups or 64 ounces of water including coconut water soup etc sometimes thirst is camouflaged as hunger perform light exercises like walking yoga etc also take supplements recommended supplements many of us are taking a lot of um, ro reverse osmosis water which ends up taking out all the minerals that we normally have in our water so um so you should start taking some supplements to replace some of those um, multivitamins without iron for women and women after menopause also take without iron but with iron for women still ovulating b complex vitamins magnesium calcium potassium vitamin k and vitamin d especially for your immune system vitamin c as well as zinc uh, fish acryl oil um, capsules uh, probiotics um, i just wanted to mention that um, the krill oil or fish oil um, actually increases your good cholesterol which is hdl so this is the keto food pyramid which is actually a low carb food pyramid unlike the one that's put out by the usda so we have all the oily substances like cheese and eggs and um, meats at the bottom and which means you eat a lot of those uh, and you can see also like oils like such as butter and olive oil and um, then taking in more green leafy vegetables like we mentioned before and lots of nuts and seeds and some non-green vegetables as well as berries are at the top obviously you see that there's no bread or pasta or sugar or milk which has a lot of lactose which is a kind of sugar corn beans and rice um, beans also includes our lentils which is a purple so we are recommending not to eat too much of that because that's even though we all say it's got more protein it definitely has more protein than rice but it has as much carbohydrates as rice so um, instead i would just replace it with leafy vegetables um, so there you have it um, i hope i'm wishing you um, many many years of healthy living and i hope you live up to 100 thank you